Hi y'all, um, oh my goodness, it's been so long since I've spoken on like a YouTube camera It's been so long since I've spoken to you guys on YouTube and I love long-form content But I'm just so lazy, which is what I'm trying to change this year But welcome to the first get ready with me on YouTube of 2023 No, welcome to the first get ready with me of 2024 Welcome to the first get ready with me of 2024. Amen. We have made it another year and I thought we could really take this time for me personally to reflect on 2023 and just the year it has been because I think to move forward in life, you need to reflect on your past actions and just the past and use that to your advantage. So I'm super excited to do this, guys. I have nowhere to actually go today, which is amazing because, you know, it gives me time to talk to you guys and not rush and don't worry I made a little list of things because I was reflecting last night but I was reflecting on certain topics that I wanted to speak to you guys about like topics that I feel comfortable sharing this is gonna be fairly honest I think oh I do have to try this refi brow gel that I got recently wait where's the comb attachment though I'm so confused because every time I get this refi brow gel where is the comb attachment you guys say comes with this so getting right into it 2023 point blank period was just not a good year for me um yeah it just wasn't a good year for me i don't know how well i can describe it it was very depressive for me i have discovered that i've had anxiety this year which is something that i never really struggled with before or maybe that i was struggling with it but i never knew it, never, it was never so horrible that I had to address it. But you know, I remember last year when I was talking to my therapist, she was like, you know, it sounds like you have anxiety. And I thought, I thought she was insane. I thought she was trying to place another mental issue on me that I just couldn't handle right now. So I was very much, I was denying the truth as early as, you know, May or March of last year. I was denying that because if we're being completely honest, I just, I didn't want another diagnosis on me. I just, I, I couldn't handle it. I already just had so many issues living at home in such a toxic household. I already had a lot of, I just had a lot of issues. I was just someone with a lot of it. And I still do have issues that I'm working through and that's okay. Like me having issues doesn't make me not worthy of love or doesn't mean that I'm not capable. I just had a lot of emotional issues. So when she was trying to like, you know, suggest that I had anxiety, it kind of triggered me because I'm like, I don't need another diagnosis. But you know, one of my mutuals said something on TikTok, her name is Sierra, and she said something that has always stuck with me ever since it just, the video came up on my For You page. She said, a diagnosis is not a burden, it's a blessing. And it's a blessing because when you can figure out why you do things the way you do and you can put a name to it, you can now learn how to treat it so that you do not have to, you know, struggle with the issues as much. And that's something I had never thought about. I was trying so hard to run away from the truth of anxiety and that I struggle with anxiety that I never thought that it was actually harming me. And you know, I also saw this one quote last year. I live by Pinterest quotes. The quote goes, are you okay with it or are you living with it? And are you comfortable with it? Like, have you just gotten so comfortable to the issue that there is no point in ever addressing it? And is it hurting you? Like, is it actually good for you or is it hurting you? And you know what? Trying to deny that, like, it was hurting me because I wasn't addressing it. And now there's like so many kind of tips and tricks that have worked for me personally that helps me with my anxiety. And I used to also have this like false misconception of anxiety that, you know, I was like, wait, but I'm not somebody that necessarily is scared of people. But what I learned is that I don't have social anxiety. I just have a lot of anxiety for the future and just my abilities and I doubt myself and then I overthink issues to the point where I can't even process what is going on and I can't carry on with what I need to carry on with to be the human that I meant to be. And you know, things like that was really what was bringing me not to the level that I've wanted to be in, 
and so that anxiety also brought me to a lot of self-comparison to people on social media which again was something i've never done like there are so many things that happened last year in 2023 that has never happened to me before and i would say that it's probably arguably one of the worst years i've ever had in my life and so i never really addressed my anxiety i cannot get over my brows wait this kind of snap so i never really like addressed my anxiety last year and that's something that i should definitely do this year um i did address it definitely near the end i told my therapist one day i was like girl i have anxiety um please don't make fun of me which is not her job but i literally had to give her that disclaimer i was like yep i try to pretend that i didn't because if we're being completely honest i just didn't want to deal with another issue in my life because i just was going through it last year and i just didn't want to go through something else in my life which was like i just i just didn't feel strong enough to handle another issue in my life but what i didn't realize is that as long as i have god i have all the strength that i need and i need to remember that i'm not god's strongest soldier but if i believe in him um he can help me get to where I need to be. And that's something I believe in. I'm not pushing my religion on you. It's something I personally believe in. So, you know, when you're talking about other people's religions in the comments, if you're going to, please be very respectful because that's what I believe in. And I believe, I believe that everybody has the right to believe what they want to believe within their own religion. That anxiety brought me to a lot of self-comparison between people on social media, me and others. And I hated that so much, you guys. I hated it. It's, it's so weird. I was seeing so many comments of people saying that, Danacy, you are just, I love looking at your videos. I love when you posted about this. And you know, when I first blew up on social media, I never compared myself to other people, ever, ever. If, if anything, I took inspiration from other people. But you can sense a difference between inspiration and comparison. And I definitely last year was comparing myself to so many people. And if we're being um, honest, it's because last year is the year that I decided I really do want to take this social media thing seriously. Like, I don't want to just post to post. I actually, you know, want to start making money from brand deals and stuff. And so because of that, and so because of that, it was like, <laughs> I realized that you know as a black creator it, it's it's pretty tough to just make money from brand deals it's it's pretty tough to get the opportunities that you deserve if you're not raking in more numbers than your white counterpart specifically i had a mutual tell me you know and i kind of knew this but i love the comparison he gave me he was like this this is the ceiling like just you know imagine your room ceiling that's the ceiling you have to be the empire state building as a black creator or as a person of color you always have to be better than your white counterparts and so that instead of me using that as motivation to keep focusing on my content and focusing on my own lane and just trusting the process and trusting my ability and the ability so many people thought that you know that i have and the potential that i have I took that as me comparing myself to, you know, sometimes my own mutuals, just people I saw on my explore page. I just scroll onto their video. And guys, I'm being very vulnerable right now because I hate admitting that I could compare myself to others because I know I'm a great person. I know I have potential. I know I have what it takes, but it's so hard when you're not seeing instant gratification which is something that plays a lot into this. I'm so used to like getting likes automatically, which is why I feel like YouTube, I'm just so lazy with it because with YouTube, you have to give a video like a week to just automatically blow up. And I'm a very impatient person. So I need to work on my patience, but I would just look at all these people and I'm like, well, why do I have these numbers? I'm talking about it with my friends and my friends are amazing. They're always reminding me that I am here because of the content I have made so far and the content that I am continuing to make. But it's just so hard when everybody is blowing up at once, which I love to see everybody's success. But it's like, whoa, like you're seeing these people who have just been on the app for four days or no, you're seeing these people that have just been on the app for four months, automatically gaining all of these followers, all of these trips, all of these things. And you know, it's black content creators, white content creators. And so it really makes me wonder, you know, why is that not me? 
why 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 not me i i so then i took it out on myself but i know it's not my fault i know what is for me will be bestowed upon me and i know that now that that is just the immature side of me talking and you know the important thing to remember is that jealousy is okay but envy is not because i would say that i was comparing myself so much but i never once thought that any of the people that i was watching did not deserve the opportunities that they didn't that they got i was just always wondering like why not me why can't this be me what did i do right and that's just something that i really will change about myself this year because it just gets to a point where you're too old and i would say that probably comparing myself hindered me it hindered my growth it hindered what i deserve i don't deserve to compare myself to people who have never walked a day in my shoes and i have never walked a day in their high heels i've never walked a day in their boots i've never walked a day in their trucker shoes you know what i mean like i these people i don't know these people and these people don't know me and instead of me working harder for what i wanted which i feel like i did work hard but comparing myself is what made me feel like i did not work as hard as i could because i'm like well they did this i could have done that and i'm like no you did all you could and it's just you know people are watching you make this content and they believe in you and so i felt so bad that people were constantly like i wish i had your confidence i wish i had your this because I'm like, I, I feel like i do have confidence in myself but i was led astray last year i definitely and i feel like another big reason to that as well is because oh my gosh that is blush on my color corrector so i just i'm gonna use my fingers because i am disgusting and i don't clean my brushes as much as i should so i yeah my growth was just incredibly hindered last year because i didn't learn to be happy in the moments that i should have been happy in i was not as proud of myself as i normally would have been because i'm like well they have this they have that but they don't have what i have and i don't have what they have my therapist told me something she was like well you need to compare your similarities to these people as well but i'm like that didn't really even help because i'm seeing these people get opportunities and honestly a lot of it has to do with resentment something i did a lot of last year resents i resented myself for not working as hard i resented my parents for not giving me the support i think a parent should give their child and although i know that i have every right to do what i want with my feelings that resentment wasn't drive towards what i needed and so the problem is you have every right to feel how you feel about towards people but if you find that that resentment and those negative feelings are hindering you from moving forward what is the point what is the point because i understand that my parents did everything they could growing up and i know they genuinely care about me but the execution was horrid growing up Water. i'm gonna see how much i can get out of this mario foundation we are working on less resentment towards myself because i am doing the best that i can i am doing the best that i possibly could and i'm working on less resentment towards my parents because the resentment i had from them like i don't know if you guys know this hating people is a lot of work not liking someone is so easy you cannot like your mailman but hating people is so, so, so hard. And I know that's like a strong word because I don't hate my parents, but I do hate the way they make me feel. I hate the way I feel when I hear their cars park. I hate the way they yell at me when I'm doing the best that I can. I hate the way that I have compassion for them. But when I need that same compassion, for some reason, it is nowhere in sight. You know what I mean? And all of those feelings of hatred damn near mirrored literal hatred so i didn't hate my parents but i did hate the way they made me feel all of last year but that hate did not help me 
and it didn't push me to the goals that I wanted to achieve on my New Year's resolution list or just as a content creator or towards this and that. And you know, whatever my parents beef with me is, that's fine, but that is none of my business. And I need to keep remembering that because it's like, I know that, but it's, I don't remember that. Does that happen to you guys? When you know something, but in the moment you forget it. Like, don't argue back with your parents because at the end of the day, they're not gonna listen. I do know that, but in the moment I forget because I am now raised to always, you know, have self-preservation, to always practice self-preservation because I refuse to be made a fool of when there's nothing I'm doing wrong. And I keep forgetting that I don't have to prove myself to anyone, not even my parents. Cause you know, I feel less pressure to prove myself on social media than I do with my own parents. And that says something. It says that I deserve more and it says that I deserve to focus on me because there is no way I should be feeling that around my own parents. And I know that at the end of the day, there is nothing that they will ever, 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 ever do to actually try to understand my point of view. I've tried. I've tried so many times to explain to them how I feel, to explain to them that I appreciate what they do for me. I'm like, I've yelled at them. I've sat down with them. I've been calm. I've been anxious. I've been sad. Like no way that I deliver the message will ever get them to understand because they have a conception in their head and I have a conception in my head. Now, I know my conception is right. I'm not gonna lie to you. I know my conception is right, okay? Not to be all cocky, but I know my conception is right. But in their mind, their conception of what is going on and the type of child I am is also right. So there is no point with arguing with them. The only thing I can really do is focus on myself and pray that God places me in the space that I deserve to be placed in because I know this space is not it. And honestly, every single, and I guess one of the reasons why last year was even tougher is because I felt very torn down. You know what I mean? Like I just did not, last year I was, I felt so weak, you guys. Very, very, very weak. I felt like exhausted every day, fighting the same battles, saying the same arguments, feeling the same way, trying to pray, like a wonder like, why are these my parents? Why can't I have the type of parents that accept you for who you are, for the type of child you are, for the differences that you have? You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not even too different from other kids. I'm just not, I'm just not the perfect child that they wanted. I'm not the kid that, you know, went to Harvard, I guess, or got their masters and a law degree and this and that. But I'm happy and I would say that the type of money that I'm making currently while I'm in college is notable and you know what I mean like I'm not making as much money as white influencers my age make while also in college but hell I'm doing the best that I can also being in school and when I was a full-time nanny I was like okay woof I am doing the best that I can why is it in enough? The simple fact of the matter is it wasn't enough because they, like I realize no, nothing I do will ever make them really like proud. And that's just something that I had to learn the hard way. So the best thing that I could really do for myself is move on, move on, not engage in argument. And that's something that I have really been working on in therapy as well. Um, you guys are gonna hear therapy a lot because like that's literally where I talk about everything before I come on the internet and talk about my feelings because I like to process things with a mental health professional before I share them on the internet. Um, you know, whatever I'm doing that, and I just, I just realized I'm doing the best that I can. They're doing the best that I can, they're, they can, but I just can't keep giving them my energy and I am giving them my energy and they're not giving me the energy that I feel like they should be giving as parents. And on that note, I feel as if like, because I was thinking about like resentment and comparison, I didn't get the chance to put myself as out there as I'd like to because I was overthinking. I was so busy thinking about where I would land that I never actually lunged 
I never tried to jump. And you know, like I really wanted to do a lot of get ready with me's last year for TikTok because I knew those were doing well and I knew that I like to talk a lot. Ooh, this bronzer is crazy. Um, what do you guys think? It's the milk bronzer. I don't know why it's blending out this way. I don't get it, but it's beautiful. But I was just so, I was so like, okay, well, if I post this get ready with me on reels, you know, it probably won't get that many likes. Like I'm like, okay, so then you don't even post it. Same thing with YouTube. I can't tell you guys how many vlogs I've started or how many get ready with me's I started, but then I didn't even give my chance to see myself a chance to edit it because I was like, well, it's probably not even gonna do well. So I might as well not edit it because I was lazy. You know, what's that Bible verse? There, That's just like a, a, a nap here, a nap there. Well, when are you going to be rich? Do you wanna be poor? Like basically that is just kind of the energy that I was emitting, I believe it is. And I, I, I know that was just the devil. I know that was the spirits of laziness. Um, I know that was me trying my hardest to escape you know, accountability. And again, that's not like something that I deserve. I feel as if a lot of people are doing that on TikTok. Like I'm lucky enough that I even put myself out there on TikTok in the first place, but that's when I had drive. Like I had, when I first put myself out on TikTok, I had drive, I had drive. And I'm going to tell you that that drive is no longer here. No, it's not. No, it's not. I don't know where that drive is. I don't know where that drive went. Um, I wish that, that drive, no, I don't wish that drive will come back. That drive is coming back, baby. That's why I'm doing a get ready with me the first week of January, 2024, because amen, I want to talk to you guys. I want to edit and I feel like YouTube is a really great hobby and that's like something that I really want to do. Like I deserve to put myself out there. Um, I know after college, I want like a traditional job as well, but for now, this is what I need to focus on. Okay, I got like a brightening shade by accident from the Huda Beauty Faux Concealer, but we're gonna try it anyways. This is Crumble. She's gonna give. Please trust me, she's gonna give. It's bright. So we'll just put a little bit because this shit, I've seen it on TikTok. It goes a long way. It's gonna give. You know what? On the rest of my face, we're gonna do like a normal colored concealer. So ooh, under the eyes will just be bright. And the rest of the face will be like, you know. Is anybody gonna go see Nicki Minaj? I'm not gonna lie to you. I will say the reason why 2023 wasn't complete shit is because I got to see Beyonce, but I don't feel the same way about Nicki Minaj. Like obviously if I get the chance to go to Nicki Minaj, I go. But it's not like on my new year's resolution or it's not like something that I need to do. But the thing is like Beyonce is a performer. Like that woman is a performer. And I can't say this, I don't know about Nicki Minaj, but that woman is a performer. You know what I mean? And I got paid to go see Beyonce. And guys, let me tell you, mother feeds her children because that was the biggest brand deal check I've ever seen. I'm talking about thousands. I'm talking about like double digits paying for my college. I'm not kidding. Like Queen B paid for college. You know when someone's like, why are you defending them? Are you on their payroll? I <laughs> I'm on Beyonce's payroll. Yes, I am. Actually, thank you for asking. I am on her payroll. I did get paid to see her Renaissance with my auntie and it was the best night ever with my aunt. And I'm just so glad that not only did she give the performance of a lifetime, but she gave my aunt and I something to forever cherish. You know what I mean? Like she gave us a memory and that is something that cannot be replaced like ever. So thank you Queen Bee because yeah, I'm, a I'm actually on Beyonce's payroll. What about it? <laughs> Let me see if this is like dry enough to blend out. I'm using a setting brush from Real Techniques and then I'm gonna smooth everything over with oh my gosh huda mm. guys this is so yummy this concealer get into the concealer it is so yummy this is the shade crumble i think i'm just gonna put all the shades on the screen this is the shade crumble this is the first time i'm using it what can we get into that what's the camera is the is it translating correctly it better this brush speaks Spanish. 
so i would say that was like a really good point in my year and my friends came for my birthday like i did have good points in the year but the way that i felt all year like every day when i woke up i felt like i was waking up with no purpose so i was just in a very big rut yes don't worry guys i talked about it with mental health professionals who so don't go around diagnosing me i hate when people do that but i did have a rut last year and this rut was just very hindering to my growth. It was almost like debilitating. There was nothing you could tell me that would make me feel like, there was nothing you could tell me that made me feel confident in my abilities as much as I should have been. And so that was the issue. But I will say the good news is the minute 2024 started, I automatically felt refreshed so it has been one week since 2024 has started well you know like almost the end of the week and i already feel so good about the future i already feel so good about what god has in store for me like i feel good and you, the only reason why i'm saying that now is because last year i didn't feel i felt horrible when 2024 started. I didn't open the year off with people that really benefited me or people that I even knew. I went to the club. And I remember when I was at the club last year, I felt horrible. Not just because not just because of the music that was playing, not that the music was like horrible. It's just like all of it made me feel like all of it made me feel very weird i was like this just does not feel like a good year already why does this year already feel so bad so icky and i didn't think anything of it because it was like the first night of 2023 but i will say this year i spent 2024 with no plans i just stayed inside and i cleaned i didn't even notice when the clock struck 12 i didn't have a new year's kiss didn't gr drink grapes or eat grapes i just prayed and i folded my laundry i cleaned my room a little bit i did some decluttering i watched the show like i spent it with the one person who's always gonna have my back me and so that felt amazing and now it's been a week and i already feel so good i think i just had one year in my 20s where it's just not gonna be the best year and that's okay <laughs> because you're trying your hardest Something I also really wanted to do that I didn't, which really made me kind of upset, is I did not get an apartment. And this made me upset because, you know, like I said, I don't like living here. Um, and people think, lots of people always comment on my get ready with me's whenever I'm sharing, you know, apartment troubles, because I know other immigrant children can relate first gen kids. They're like, well, why don't you just get one? Why don't I just get an apartment? Why don't I just, like, it's just so audacious. Why don't I just get one? You think I'm sitting here complaining every day, crying? I didn't even cry because I don't have tears left in my body. I barely cried in 2023. You can't even catch me crying anymore because I have no emotion. I was not in touch with myself at all. Like I didn't even want to feel the negative emotions, but because I didn't want to feel so many negative emotions, if I didn't feel the negative emotions, I felt numb. So it was either me feeling numb or me feeling very negative. Like, why didn't you guys rent for a 600 feet square apartment outside of Boston? So not even in the capital, outside of Boston is $2,300 and the problem with influencing which would be my current job as of right now because i just could not get a nannying job if i wanted to because i have so many classes in person next semester and no family would ever vibe with that schedule which rightfully so the reason why i didn't get a job or i couldn't just move out is because i'm very scared um it's like i have money in my bank account currently i've accumulated so much thank god but how do i know i'm gonna accumulate that same amount next year for my groceries my rent my my couches my this my that my bills it's scary it's scary i don't know like i wish i was currently making a set amount of money a month you know like 5k if i was making 5k a month i'd be out of here by now if i could guarantee that i would make 5k a month 
I'd be out of here right now, but I can't guarantee that I'm making 5K a month. I'm not doing that. Like I make money from influencing, but I'm not one of those influencers that always has a brand deal. I don't know where I'm gonna land, so it's better for me not to jump. And you know, one of these days, I feel like I'll be so sick that I'll just do it. I don't know where I'm gonna land, but I'll just leave. But I can't promise that for myself right now. And so that's why I haven't moved out because I, I do have money, but who's to say that I'm gonna have that same exact money next year? Who's to say I'm gonna have that same exact money by the end of the year? And my lat, and you know, so many people are so lucky where like they could immediately go back to their parents' home. But it's not that I don't have that luxury. Of course my parents would accept me back, but not graciously, not without boasting, not without pointing out all my flaws. And so that's what I'm scared of, the failure of it all. I know you guys believe in me, which is like so amazing and I love that. But I wish brands could believe in me the same way that you guys do. I wish brands trusted that I could like, the, I love products. I love makeup. I love skincare. I love promoting. Because if I use the product, then trust me, I will put you on. If I love the product, that I will put you on. But that's not, that's not my reality. And so because that's not my reality, um, it's very scary for me to just say, okay, let's, let's go. You know, I have a set, like, say I have 10K in my bank account. Okay, I have $10,000 in my bank account. Let's just go. Even that is so scary because who's to say I'm going to have 10K? in four months when I have to pay bills again after that runs out. You know what I mean? That's why it's so scary. I really, 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 really wish that I could trust myself enough to think that I would make that much money influencing, but I don't, I don't know. That's the simple fact of the matter. The simple fact of the matter is I don't know how much I'm gonna have in the future. So yeah, <laughs> that's a little bit about that and I wish I got an apartment, I really do, um, but it's scary, guys. It's so, 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 so scary. Um, and also, I pay like so much money for school a semester that that is a part of the bills, right? And like, who's to say that I'm gonna make enough money for school and to have an apartment? I don't know. It's just so aggravating because it's like, just work harder, right? Like, that's like my mindset. Okay, if you want this, you gotta work harder, but it's like, Dude, I do the get ready with me's and they, they're doing well. I promote the products and then these brands comment, but they never reach out to me for a brand deal. If at most they'll do gifting and I love having free skincare. I haven't had to pay for a lot of skincare in the past few months. Like I have the most expensive skincare now and I'm so grateful. I, and I will say that's the reason why my skin is clearing up if we're being completely honest. But even when I share how much I love these expensive skincare products, none of these brands reach out to me and think hey you know like you know she could be an amazing spokesperson and then that's also where the comparison comes in i'm like well okay this girl has 500k like i have more followers and she deserves all 500k followers and i'm not saying that she doesn't deserve this deal but why not me as well and that's like the why not me mentality sucks so bad because i did see a really good comparison from floss baby who i love flossy baby who i love on tiktok and she was just like listen sometimes you know, God could give you two different sandwiches and you could be praying to him and be like, why didn't you get this sandwich? And it's just because, you know, someone asked for grilled cheese, you asked for a filet mignon sandwich or something like that. So if you ask for a filet, filet mignon, it's gonna take a lot more work and a lot more time for you to get your sandwich. Of course that person's gonna get their grilled cheese in two seconds because that's all they asked for. And you know, that really helped me because I'm like, I do have big goals. I do have big dreams. You know, one day I do want a house all by myself and I don't even want a nice car, I just want a sustainable car. And I do want to like experiment with my fashion because I'm a very basic girly when it comes to fashion, but I want to have like elevated fashion and I want to have a loungewear company one day. Is this focusing? I do want a lot in the future. I actually really like these blushes from GXVE, which is Gwen Stefani's brand. This is in the shade Ex-Girlfriend. And this is in the shade Feeling Cheeky. So I'm going to do the ex-girlfriend one. And so that really actually that comparison really helped me. I was like, girl, yeah, you want you want the world. I do want the world. I think I deserve the world. I want the world by my definition of the world. And to me, the world is being happy, being loved. Like I do want a husband one day. 
and so that's why that's why i actually never care if i have a boyfriend or not like i am a little confused as to why i still don't have a boyfriend i think i'm very beautiful intelligent smart amazing like fuck like i'm not even gonna get into physicalities because you guys are gonna think i'm like actually the cockiest person in the world but like i'm a very pretty person i'm a very captivating person i think i can hold a conversation so i'm a little bit shocked that i don't have a boyfriend but then when i see like the average man i'm like right the average man my goals are just gonna take a little bit longer than other people's goals and even if people had more extensive goals than me and they reached them before me that's life and it's not up to me to dictate who gets their blessings and who doesn't get their blessings and so me comparing myself is not fair not only to myself but to the person that has their own prayers what that person wished for is none of my business what who that person prayed to is none of my business who that person manifested to is none of my business my business is right in front of me and if we're being completely honest i spent so much much of last year wondering about other people's business that i wasn't standing on business myself and that's not fair because i deserve so much more than that and i know that so if we're being completely honest i have to do a whole mindset change because i think i'm a good person i think i'm a wonderful creator but i'm not being the best person that i can be and that's not fair my camera keeps stopping because it can't take all this it can't take all this information but i'm trying this hoodie i'm trying so many products today this is like the huda beauty press powder in easy or easy bake and snatch press powder in banana bread for a little bright end. i just need to remember who runs my life and can i tell you guys something it's me and it's you we both run our lives and i feel like spent so much time trying to figure out if it was an algorithm that runs my life if it was like the type of brand deals that run my life no i run my life i'm just going to live my life another like hard thing about tiktok i would say well is that everybody wants me to just like keep doing povs and you know just being the funny girl that i used to once be and i still think i'm funny i still think if you ask me to act on spot give me a name face give me a background right i'll do a little improv for you but it's not that i'm not that person anymore it's just that i i don't sit around thinking of pov ideas like i used to like that was my thing in 2020 2021 and most of 2022 like i sit around i think about pov ideas and usually they came to me so quickly but there was a time when pov ideas didn't come to me as quickly as they once did and i'm sorry like that's when i knew it was time to retire and it scares me that people just do not care for that side of me because that's like the only side of me that people stay for which is why I just like my following keeps fluctuating and things like that i don't have the big like my following just will never reach past 1 million it seems and it's because people want like the povs but i don't know what to tell people i'm not you know people change people grow i found more love in lifestyle and just funny videos in general and this is not to say that like it, the, the thing is when i do get a pov idea heck let's sit down let's execute the shit but that's just like i don't sit around and that's like not my job to just like only povs you know what i mean oh Ugh, i hate when it's so sharp sometimes the other thing I really have to work on for this year is being in touch with my emotions. In my brain, there is never a point in crying, ever. I learned from a very young age that crying doesn't help much. So I never really actually stopped crying, but I still had the emotions. There was just like a point last year where I'm just like, it was just like, stop crying. Nobody hears you. There is no point in crying. But, you know, one thing my therapist was telling me is that the reason well she says i'm not being as emotional with my tears and just with myself she said i'm not crying as much as i should because since i've told myself that crying is pointless i'm treating myself in the same exact way that my parents treat me when i cry don't know if anyone can relate but sometimes when us immigrant kids cry it doesn't really do anything parents don't really get it or they don't handle the situation appropriately and it ends up leaving a long 
list of issues and emotional issues in the future. And I'm just treating myself the exact same way that my parents treat me. So am I really any better for not crying? Or am I exactly like my parents? Which, that was food for thought. Ooh, I want this to be, I love my lips, but sometimes I just like literally overdo it with the brown liner, especially because it's so dark and I love this dark. You know what, we're just gonna go ahead and go with some purple gloss to match. Yeah, right. we'll do purple gloss. So here is the final face. Um, I really enjoyed having you guys here today. I hope that anything I said resonated with you. My mom is yelling in the background. I don't know if you can hear it. I love you guys so much. Here is the healing, changing, and believing in ourselves because we have so much potential. So let's use it. And I really hope that you guys use any of the products. I'm gonna link them down below, but I love you guys so much. And I really hope that I do more of these because this was really relaxing and fun. Also makeup. I know you see me. Mwah. Bye.